Well, I have never met her, and so I, I love the fact that she's already focused on me. Um, Y'all willing to let Holy Spirit do whatever He wants you to do? Okay, like, I'm at, are you guys open to let Holy Spirit do whatever He wants to do? Okay, all right, th this is good because we come into this place. Wow, hi. So I told you what I gotta do with go what's going on inside of me. He may have done, or she may have done this with anybody, but um, that's a good sign. Uh, because you can tell she, you know, she's not a, they haven't been grooming her. So she, other than be halter trained, that's the extent of her experiences. But it's almost like we got to do something on purpose in our culture nowadays to not just sit and listen and be entertained by things. And so that's why I asked you, are you willing to let Holy Spirit do whatever whatever's gonna happen here, because this is one time in your life that I pray that more than ever, that your heart is wide open to what's going on in the room right now, and realize that although that this is entertaining, it's fun, it's very active, this could be a defining moment for every one of us. And because of the size of the animal and the fact that I can see that she's super intelligent, she can do whatever she wants to do. What I pray is that she's gonna to respond to what's going on inside of me in such a way that she'll understand how beautiful submission is and why leadership is something that should be able to be trusted when it comes in the form of godliness. I know a lot of you are wondering, why, why am I pushing the horse away from me and having her do all these circles? We've already been having quite a conversation because she's competent enough and confident enough in herself that she's like, I don't know who you are and I'm fine by myself. But all that I needed to make sure that I established with her is that I'm powerful enough to lead and I want her to know that I'm also kind enough that you can trust me. So looking at me from this side, and she's bowed her head, she's licking her lips, all these are just really good signs that in a really quick manner, she said that I trust you but she hasn't really asked me very many questions yet. And so the question I really want her to ask is because she's got to realize that something's very different today than what any other day that she's had with a human. 
and that this engagement and this time together is going to forever mark her life, that she won't ever be the same after today. And I pray that over each one of us in this room, that whatever happens here, that we're changed because we've seen more clearly, we understand like with full confidence that this actually is the nature of God. If my goal is to get her to listen to me and do what I say, then I would do what I believe the Bible calls having a form of godliness but denies the power. It means I can, I can do all the work and make her obey me and then I've got a slave. We've got a father that is God and he doesn't want slaves and he doesn't want servants. He wants sons and daughters. And as you watch this interaction today, I hope that it gives you a different context or a different meaning on what it means to be a son or a daughter and what it means to have a father like we do. I love Jesus, if that's not obvious already, for so many different reasons, but the reality that he was fully man and capable of experiencing fear, meaning that he actually had courage. So whatever weapon he used to overcome fear is what I want you to look at for a second because it said there was a joy that was set before him that would make it to where he would endure the cross. His love for us, his I'm gonna I'll make it very personal, his love for me made it to where he would do whatever is necessary to make sure that fear never has to boss me around again. That I don't get to make decisions by fear and I don't have to ever have fear of what may come. It's a complete disarming of this weapon that the world has in inflicting upon a culture. Fear of the unknown and fear of governments and fear of wars and fear of weather and fear of, I don't even know who's telling me the truth anymore. I don't know who to listen to. It's everywhere. And so if we don't know what it means to actually love the ways of Jesus in this, in this manner, Jesus had a love for a cause, for a people that made it to where he was willing to do whatever is necessary. And this horse is not necessarily in fear at this point. Um, we'll see in a minute what it thinks of, of phase two of the project here. But um, I want her to know that her, because her experience of mankind, as I can tell already, has been pretty substantial at this level. She's been on a halter, led around like she, she knows how to follow me. She doesn't seem nervous about me being around her. Her confidence in me as a leader, knowing that I'm willing to make myself vulnerable to her 
this is the this is the dangerous end because those back legs pack a good punch but if she was only designed for me to lead her around then it's kind of a waste no it's an extreme waste of what it is that she has as her potential And because as much as is possible for me, your awareness of the ways of God, I think so many people have either got, like they've been so wounded by church and religion and man's idea and everybody's trying to manipulate you to get them, get you to follow their ways. I want her to know that she can trust all of herself to me. Right now, she's just really affirming me that, that she's okay. Think about it for a minute. When Brian asked me what I have to do to prepare myself to get in a round pen with a horse, because generally you'll take weeks of doing this type of stuff before you get on them. Or you will intimidate the animal enough to where you actually break their spirit and make it to where they're going to trust you or else they'll be punished. That doesn't make sense. Yet somehow that's what happens with us in, in our interactions with each other and our understanding of who God is. As we think somehow that punishment is connected to this thing. What if all the punishment was already taken out on Jesus? And he said, whenever there's the fear of punishment, torment is involved in it. And if you believe in a God that is wanting to torment you, then there is no hope in that. You might as well sign up for another religion because there's plenty of them out there that'll punish you. But we got a good father is trying to prepare a way for every one of us, even in this moment, to make it to where all of the truth dispels the lies and punishment goes away. The darkness still rages, we still feel the distance. Your love and mercy keep crushing resistance, calling us back to of your perfect Jesus spent all that time with his men and women and teaching them his ways, leading them, having them follow. And then he told them that it's going to be really important that you remain here until I send the helper. And when the helper comes, he's going to empower you. And if I just got done meeting with a couple that uh, from the last service that Okay, they felt powerless in their marriage. They were ready to give up. And hope has to start somewhere. And so there's marriages in this building that like fear has got in and enough things have happened to where now we're making decisions based on fear. We've lost the hope of of things changing. This oneness that Jesus said that he would pour out over us is what's happening in this room right now is that people are being filled with power. And it's not just because you're hearing the words that I'm speaking, it's because you're hearing the words that our Father's speaking to you and he's showing you a different way, saying that this is the way, walk in it.
for a horse, this is the most vulnerable, this most vulnerable thing for them to do. And what I've done is I've walked around her and let her feel that there's, there's an intimacy that's established to where she knows that I'm not just here, but I'm a rewarder. And that everything that she's done in the last 20 minutes has come with a real immediate reward. And it's not always that way, but it's why she's able to trust this quickly. But sometimes it gets a little messy in the process. chuckles I was trying to get off gracefully okay so she's scared and she's not looking at me that becomes a little bit of a problem because all the trust that I built with her she's questioning it rope fell off your nose I'm all over your back none of that's natural like it doesn't feel right so how much courage is she showing right now because all that just felt wrong and truly I made a mistake so it's not even her fault But isn't it wonder how, how, how real life gets where we can talk about a bunch of ideas and then when somebody gets triggered and things start, emotions get raised, we don't know what we're gonna do next. So I'm just curious, would this be a good time to punish her? I mean, it's hard to believe but that's actually what some people would do is well if she wants to buck we'll let her buck and we'll just scare her until she's done being scared and unfortunately it works if you want to get a horse broke and obedient we want something completely different than that I know the last time it didn't go quite so well, but if you and I are gonna go together, we gotta go together. So let's try this again. It's a good girl. It's a good girl. It's good steps. what we see and I love it because I don't just see it in scripture I see it in the lives of the men and women that I interact with is that they say yes I want to follow Jesus I want to I want to be a son of God I want to be a daughter of God until they don't and they make some mistake or some decision and the voice that comes in immediately is where's your God now and why you should feel ashamed of what you've done. And all I'm gonna do is just say, we're just gonna start over, we're just gonna do it again. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna learn to move together. And you're gonna realize what freedom looks like isn't just walking around doing what you want to do and eat grass and party come on we gotta move 
Come on, we gotta move. We gotta move. She doesn't want to make a mistake again. Sometimes we lose our wonder. Like we're afraid of not having questions answered. I don't think that she has a single thought that makes any sense to her right now. Her entire world has just got undone. What is it about this guy and why won't he go away? Like nothing I'm doing is ever, like it doesn't make sense in any level of her understanding. One, because I'm a different creation than her. But God said that he created us in his image. And when we watched the ways that Jesus did life, he just did them differently than anybody else. It didn't even make sense. You could call it the upside down kingdom. He says, if you want to be first, make yourself last. Those that hate you and say mean things about you and despise you, spitefully use you, Love them. See what happens. I'm not talking about passivity. I'm talking about a kingdom that's led by love and not by fear and not revenge. The bitterness doesn't get to speak to us anymore. What'd you see? <laughs> she wants me to see it. See that? I think she sees us. I'm prettier than you are. <laughs> yeah. But when we say we're going to follow Jesus, <clears throat> I'm glad that we've got models of it and that we get led by leaders that, you know, are just giving it a go, doing their best to say that this is what the Word says. This is the best way that I know to understand it. But in real life, We have these principles that say it's like in Jesus that we move and we breathe and we have our being, that everything about us is empowered by His Spirit. We end up moving and doing things that we've never dreamt of doing. And it doesn't have to make a whole bunch of sense. <clears throat> The 
by the way, this is like, I don't even know what to compare it to. It doesn't hurt. Let me just say that. But with every step, her confidence is building. Experiences. Once you think you got it figured out, then it changes. Reminds me a lot of marriage. <laughs> I could say it had to do with my wife, but I think it, <laughs> if we're honest, just things are always changing. There's just all these variables, and it's like the only way I'm going to learn to respond to or interact with this woman that is so different than me. Beautifully different. Created in the image of God. The feminine expression of His nature. And because I'm stronger than her in most ways, physically, if I wanted to, I could have, I could have used, I could have used that to, to crush her, make her obey, or I could have manipulated, which I've tried all these things other than beating her. Uh, it just don't work. I could even use the Bible and just, just tell her to submit. How's that feel, girls? That don't work either. That wasn't even what Jesus' heart was in it. Like we're partnering in life together and there's these things that are always changing and the variables and it's like all of her attention. Right now she's really distracted by the way. But if mine and her attention, if mine and my wife's attention gets put back on, okay, how did Jesus do this? What does love look like? How do I overcome the fear and the wounds that both of us are carrying? I'm, I'm so down for marriage counseling and getting people involved and helping us do things better, but ultimately it comes down to Jesus that was the author and the finish of our faith, where her devotion to Jesus and my devotion to Jesus makes it to where we're not trying to control each other. We're not trying to manipulate each other to get what we want. And it just comes right down to what is it that Jesus is doing? Okay, let's try and walk again. I lift my head. give her a gift and like it's it's more than just putting a saddle on her but there's an equipping that Jesus said that he would come and give and he as he poured a spirit out on us that that spirit would give us power but he'd also give us tools and giftings there's things that you weren't born with 
that when you give your life to Jesus and you're filled with his spirit, you actually develop new giftings, new power to do things that you didn't, it wasn't just part of your physical nature. They're spiritual gifts and they carry with them power. I know there's been a lot of abuse of that in the churches. So please hear me through a pure heart. I want to have the power of God in my life, not just the words, not just the belief systems. And if the people around me are not experiencing the attributes of heaven, I'm not gonna get, hang my head in shame, but I do have to look again and say, what, where is the power in this area of my life? Why are my insecurities still rising to the surface every time somebody offends me? I need the, the resources of heaven to heal me and empower me to where I can do things that I couldn't do before. I wouldn't even have the ability to think that way. Let's keep going. Remember, she's never had any of this stuff done. So again, it's just hard for me because I don't want to make this about, I don't want the enemy to come in and lie like, oh, well, this is easy. It, it's really supernatural is what it is. Love actually chases away fear. And when she came into this room, there was enough faith in this room to where she could already feel something different than she's ever felt out there on the farm. What is it like to be in a room filled with a bunch of people that carry the presence of God? So before I even stepped into the ring, she's already feeling what God's doing in the room. Just learning a little bit about um, the conditions that I'll say the home that she came out of. She's actually pretty comfortable. <laughs> Brian, come on, boy. So I'm purposely making as light of this as possible because to her, this is a big deal. Like, this is. A little bit of a trauma response. This is uh, out of control. I don't know what to do. And the worst thing I can do is focus on what she's doing wrong right now. She's finding her peace. She's figuring it out. She's self-soothing. Oh. Yeah. 
Sometimes we don't know what to do other than just run to the Father and say, Papa, help. So the home she came out of, whenever she did something wrong, she got punished for it. And I'm not saying that consequences for actions are bad. So please don't hear that in this. What I mean is that love wasn't what was producing the conversations. It was, life will be good for you if you do what I say, and it's really not going to be very good for you if you don't. That's not the kingdom of heaven. That's not a home that is of Jesus. That's a home that's going to have to use fear and intimidation and punishment to control the household. Otherwise, things get out of order. What if there's a different way? Where if it's like, you know, if I know you're upset right now, can you, you can do what you need to do. If you want to be back in my space, I'm excited for it. But please bring yourself to the space. Let, we'll talk about it. It's okay. I'm not mad at you. Our Father is just that kind. And so whatever it is that you're running from and whatever it is that's got you to where you're thinking that this is why things aren't working out for your life, please consider again. Because there's nothing but hope and a future for someone that's being raised in love. What do you think? Huh? One more time. So if you don't understand what she's doing, this is full surrender. And this is her saying, I trust you. I want to be connected to you. And there was a beautiful story. <clears throat> this guy brought, uh, was telling Jesus about this, this boy that was really sick and things that were going on. And Jesus asked him if he believed and he says, I do. Like, I really do believe. That's why I'm here telling you this. But help me with my unbelief. Like Jesus was just so kind. He wasn't... To that man that needed a word of encouragement in a season of his life where he wasn't really sure what to do next, he had given up. He put all his hope back in Jesus. And it wasn't his faith that moved the mountain in that situation. It was just a really honest, Jesus, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. Because the reality is I'm going to get back in this saddle and we're going to move again. And her trust and everything that she just said to me, sometimes it doesn't feel the same in the moment. Like things come up and, and you start getting afraid again. It's just trying to walk. Good. Then 
a story or a song I've heard. You're righteous in glory, You're good for your word. You're loving and patient, you've always been kind. You brought me back to life. I don't know how you always do it. change you're always moving great is your faithfulness great is your faithfulness oh i don't know how you always do it you never change doesn't add up when I feel like I'm worthless you're calling my bluff and no I'm not insecure cause your promise is sure your mercy still endures I don't know how you always do it you never change When you're waiting to be punished, it just kind of prolongs the fear. But because she can't find punishment in this, she's having to rethink the whole grid and how it is she's going to protect herself. And why I wanted to get on her in that moment was I want her to be assured time and time again, you don't have to protect yourself. I'm your defender. Vengeance is mine. I have a future and a hope, and death isn't even afraid or a, a scary thing anymore. Because we're not afraid to live, we're not afraid to take chances, we're not afraid to die. Like, I'm gonna live forever, so what are you gonna do to him? Someone that has no fear of death, they're unstoppable. I don't want to die. I think I got a lot of stuff left to do. So please don't take what I said as an unhealthy thing. Like, what are we actually afraid of? What's leading your life? Is it love or is it fear? Is it truth or is it lies? And every one of us, just like this horse, like we're having to, oh yeah, let's do it again. One more lap, one more day, one more year but it's just the kindness of God that just keeps bringing us back to the space of, we're okay. We're just not gonna say, stay in the same place. You were built for something very special. Like there is a vision over this horse's life. I don't, gosh, I wish I could take him back to Idaho. <laughs> He's something. Like, he's the kind of horse that if you point at a mountain, he'll crush it. You say, cross that river, he'll say, how fast you want to go? Fire? No problem. I can grow more hair. That kind of horse. But right now, he's just still trying to get over some past and still waiting. If he makes the mistake, when am I going to get punished? more. Okay. 
future. He's not fully confident that he can run without me on the saddle without bucking. So I'm just going to show him he can do it. Come on. fear. I hate it so bad. I want it out of our lives for good. And I don't know what you need to do. Get a scorpion and put it in some plastic and step on it every day. And remember that I've been given authority over this stuff. Like remind yourself, do something, remind each other. Cause gosh, we've got so many things, legitimate things to be afraid of. But as we remind each other what our hope is in, like how tragic for a horse built like her, as beautiful as she is, to be afraid to run. done this before, but I feel like Holy Spirit's like really <laughs> pounding on. We've got to get out of this servant mentality. We're going to beat it up. Like we're running out of time, so we better get serious about it. If she thinks she's my slave, she's never going to know how to relate to me as a father. She might eat my saddle. <laughs> That's how you do it. You just eat fear. But if she knows who she is to me, then of course she's gonna know how to serve. This is a real core identity issue that's making it to where she doesn't even know what to do apart from me now. She wants to be one with me and she doesn't know what to do apart from me now. And so it's the courage that built into Jesus' men where Peter, the guy that Jesus said, you're the rock in which I'm gonna build my church on, was scared so scared that he was scared of a little girl. Couldn't even admit. This is the same dude that says, I'll, I'll die with you, Jesus. Well, sorry, son, this ain't about flesh and blood. You're gonna get scared again, and I'm okay with that. So his disciples did it, so I said, it's okay that she can do it. 
She doesn't know what to do with this power that she's been given. But then Jesus came back to his disciple and said, do you love me? And so I'm gonna ask you the question, do you love him? As Jesus stands here before you, not me, do you love me? It's a great question. Do you trust me? And if so, what's stopping us? What's stopping us from being this world-changing force that Jesus designed his kids to be? It's where we lead nations. We don't sit around falling victim to them, acting as though we don't even have a say in it. Brian? So I guess I'm not riding this one. <laughs> yes, he's much bigger than I am. Huh? You're bigger than I am. She was noticing. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Maybe. Todd, first time I met Todd, we were talking about this, so the first time he was getting into this, he was telling me about, you don't like the phrase, a broken horse, it's, it's, you set this horse free, but he said, yeah, broken horse, to use that vernacular, is actually stronger than a wild horse and lives longer than a wild horse. One guy on the back of a horse that's set free like this can outrun and round up an entire herd of wild horses. And yet we think that I'm at my best, I'm at my wildest when I'm doing my own thing and I'm away from God. No, we're at our weakest and we die sooner. Jesus says in John 8, 32, I was reflecting on it, you will know the truth and the truth will make you feel like crap. <laughs> no, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. This is the truth, friends. The truth is you were created to have God set you free. You were created to know that you are loved by God. You were created to have a future that's beyond your capacity that you and I can never have until we allow God to bridle us and to give us a future that we don't have on our own. If you've never had that, you've never asked for that, you can do that right now. Just say a little prayer and you can mutter this to God in your own words after every sentence I say. It goes something like this. God, I want you in my life. I don't want to run in circles anymore. I ask you, forgive me for my wildness. Forgive me for my selfishness, for my sin. I ask that you would fill me now with your Holy Spirit as best I can. I will follow you the rest of my life. Amen.